Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Nikki LaRose. If you're new here, I'm a celebrity makeup artist based in Los Angeles. And for today's video, I have a very exciting video because I did a full face makeup look, a very glam makeup look using only Huda Beauty products. So if you wanna see how to get this look right here, then keep watching. Okay, so I have gone through my entire makeup stash and I dug through everything and I accumulated a whole bag of my Huda Beauty products. These are my personal products. They're not the stuff that's in my makeup kit. So these are my Huda Beauty products. Um, actually, I lied, minus this palette, I've used this a couple of times in my professional makeup kit, but I'm really excited to use this again. I haven't really explored enough looks with it. I did one look on my YouTube channel and I didn't really do that much else. So it's about time that I bring this back out and use it. And also the good news about this video is it did not cost me a dime. And all the other videos that I've done that are full face makeup applications, like full face looks of one brand, like the NARS, Charlotte Tilbury have cost me hundreds and hundreds of dollars. So it's really nice to save some money on this video. So to get started, I am gonna do my eyes first and I already have a little bit of concealer on my eyelids. I already did my eyebrows off camera, but I'm gonna just prep my lids a little bit more with the Huda Beauty Faux Filter Concealer. I only need a teeny bit, just, just a little bit to like really get my eyelids fully prepped and I'll be patting it on with a BK Beauty 206 brush. There's no, no real technique involved with this. Just get that concealer on your eyelid or whatever eye prep you're gonna be using. But the reason why I do like concealer is, I've talked about this so many times, but it just helps to cancel out any redness in your eyelids. Um, it also helps to mask if you're really tired, you know, it'll help give you like that refreshed kind of look. And for me also, I have um, like very visible veins that you can see on my eyelid. You know, like the skin is thin on your eyelid for most of us. So this is just a great way to, of course, camouflage that. Get one nice even tone throughout my eyelid. So once that is on, I'm going to immediately go in and set it with the Easy Bake Powder and Cupcake. Let me open this bad boy up. Oh, I like this packaging. I like this box. Freshly baked. That was very satisfying. <laughs> nice. I'm so excited to have a new one of these. I can't even tell you. I really can't even tell you. I'm so excited. Just a disclaimer. If you've never tried this powder, it does, it is scented. Um, it's, it's actually, it's kind of, I would say it's heavily scented. I really enjoy the scent. I think it smells like incredible, like freshly baked vanilla cookies. So if, if you like things like that, like I do, I don't think you'll mind the scent. Now for sanitary purposes, I'm going to tap the excess of that powder into a tissue. This is one of my tricks because this powder, to be totally honest, is going to go directly into my professional makeup kit. So I don't wanna cross contaminate by going like that with the cap and then having a dirty cap, that's just gross. So buff out that crease really quick and then lightly set my eyelids with that powder. You can see that's gonna instantly mattify my eyelids. Now I'm properly set, I am ready to go. I am ready for the fun, which is going to be this palette. Such a beautiful palette. Not every shade is like a daily wearable color, but most of the ones I'm gonna to use today are very, very wearable. So I'm actually gonna start with Keep Going. And for my first shadow, I'll be using a BK Beauty 202 brush and dipping into that Keep Going shade. I'm gonna tap off the excess. I'm gonna start on my more difficult eye today. And I'm just gonna keep that above my crease. I say above because this eye is my hooded eye. So, you know, where my actual crease is, is underneath this fold. But if I were to actually like apply this into like what is my proper crease on this side, when I go do this eye, I would look like I have two completely different eyes. And listen, I already have like very unsymmetrical eyes, which I'm sure you may or may not have noticed. So to avoid that, I'm going above my actual crease on this eye. I'm just applying light pressure to get this first shade applied and just kind of like set the, the groundwork for the rest of my shadows to go on top. I'm gonna feather it way, way out because you know I like that look of being nice and pulled out. It's gonna make my eyes look much bigger than they actually are. And then bring it off to the side of my nose just a touch, kind of off to this eye. Switch my brush to a Zueva 228 Lux Crease. I'm gonna now dip into the shade Rebel. Now, this side of the palette that I'm now dipping into is much more on the cool side, but I, I really like to mix cool and warm tones. I don't think there's any major rules against that. So just blending this towards the outer corner of the eye. 
and then just softly, softly about midway into the crease. Okay, so just layering a little bit more of that rebel shade into the tightest part of my crease, like right in that socket, just for some, just for some extra dimension and depth. So now that's on, I'm gonna dip into a little bit of the shade Power with a very old school MAC 242 brush. Lay this onto my actual eyelid. And I'm just being really precise because I'm trying to further give the illusion that this eye is not hooded so it ends up matching this eye more. So placement is a little different, of course, because on this eye I am like faking and like creating that optical illusion that I have that crease throughout my lid. Whereas this eye, I don't have to. I just kind of like put it and line it up to my actual crease. Now I don't have a Huda Beauty setting spray. I wish I could have gone out and gotten the um, Resting Boss, or is it Resting Boss? Yeah, Resting Boss setting spray. It's like an aerosol spray can. I actually used that years and years ago when they first came out with it. And I think it's a phenomenal setting spray. But that stuff is lethal. Like if you open your eyes after you spray that, it's gonna feel like rubbing alcohol has like hit your eyeballs. It's very lethal. So, you know, be careful when you're using it. But now that I wet my MAC 242 brush, I'm going to dip into bold moves. And, you know, I, I kind of like the idea of like mixing some different tones for this eyeshadow look, just, just doing something a little different, but yet in my style. So I'm gonna take that Going to. This actually shows up a lot more neutral than I just described it, but I'm gonna work this onto more so the center of my eyelid. And then layer it on top of that other more nude peachy tone that I applied before, just to give my eyelids a little bit of like a gradient and color. Same thing, I'm gonna repeat the process. That's up here. And again, going above the crease of my actual eye on this side. You just gotta fake it till you make it here. Shimmery shadow is on. Now we get to do the fun part. Okay, switching to a Zoeva 226 smudger brush. I'm gonna dip into the shade Confident. Tap off the excess straight into my mirror. This shadow is super super pigmented. And I have to say all these shadows have been super, super pigmented. This one especially is like very rich in pigment. Switching to this eye. So I'm gonna first start at the very end of my top lash line. I'm gonna kind of stamp it on. Once I'm happy with the placement, I can then work outward to slowly create my wing. And, you know, as usual, it's gonna look really messy. It's the, you know, trust the process. And with this eye, I definitely had to be, again, like very more aware of my placement because this is my hooded eye. So, you know, the way that I angle this eye, the way I apply all my products, especially my eyeliner, it just, it's a different technique. It's a whole different feeling. No, I want more of like a, like straight across type wing. I don't want it to be curved up as you can probably tell. It's also important to like if you're trying to figure out like if you have the placement right, especially if you have hooded eyes. I mean that especially only goes for if you have hooded eyes. You want to make sure you have the placement right. You want to tilt in different angles. So tilt down a little bit, see where it's landing, tilt up, and then look straight ahead. But by switching very, very subtly like the angle of your your um how you're looking into the mirror you'll be able to tell exactly where that eyeliner is and how it's gonna look throughout all movements, basically. So once I'm happy with the angle and I know where it's at, I can close gently and just kind of tap on just like another little bit across the way. Just so it's gonna go straight across, you know, as best as possible. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna lose my mind over trying to get this to match up perfectly with that eye. I'm just not gonna do it, <laughs> you know? Life's too short. Go back over this eye just a little bit to darken it. So now that I have my powder eyeliner down, 
I'm going to switch to the uh, Life Liner Quick and Easy in Very Brown. This is a really deep brown. It's a liquid liner and it's going to help to blend these two worlds together. So what I'm going to do is use this to line the rest of my eyes. So I'm going to use this very thin and very, very delicately along the top lash line. And now once I get to the inner corner, you'll notice that I'm keeping my eyes open. This is really challenging. So if you, if you can't do that, don't worry about it. It's not going to make or break your eye makeup look. And I'm just dragging it out into my inner corner tear duct ever so slightly. And now I'm going to close just gently. And I'm just connecting both worlds together. And you can see what a difference that makes too from this eye to this eye. It just kind of completes that liner look because you are, you are completing it basically. Okay, let's move on to mascara. I'm gonna use one of my favorites, the Legit Lashes Mascara. I think I'm gonna start first with the, let's start first with the curl, curl and length, this end right here. So this has like a curved, curved wand. Let's get right in there. Now I'm not too concerned about the amount of mascara that I deposit onto my lashes because I am gonna go in with those false lashes and apply them on top. So I'm just trying to do like a nice little base layer of mascara and really coat these inner corner lashes because I'm not gonna be applying false lashes in this area. Now we're at the fun part. We're gonna clean up these wings. So I'm gonna take my micellar water and my favorite Amazon pointed Q-tips. These were linked in my Amazon favorites video and just spill a little bit and then saturate this end. And now looking straight ahead, you know, actually let's do my, my hooded eye first. All right, let's move on to lashes. My mascara is fully dry. I'll be using the Huda Beauty Sticky Tack Lash Glue. This is a really good lash glue. Very, very strong. And then let's try these out. I have not used these, like, as you can clearly see, but um, they look beautiful. So I just hope they don't look too massive on my eyes. So let me open these up. So they have an individual, they have a natural chunks and a dramatic flares. Definitely sums it up with the natural chunks. I like those, that name is really funny. I'm gonna pull a couple of these natural ones out and then I'm gonna pull out a couple of the individuals. And what I'm gonna do is just kind of layer the two, but I'm gonna keep them going only halfway into my lash line because I don't want them to take over my entire eye makeup look. So taking the wand of glue, I'm gonna start with the individual because I, I measure them out. The individuals are actually longer in length than the cluster or the chunks. So just taking a little bit of glue on these. Lashes are on. I'm gonna let them dry down. Let's do some underpainting again because this is a very, very heavily, heavily pigmented product. Um, this is an offer like a beginner contour or cream bronzer user. I think this is very like, this can be a little tricky, a little, a little more advanced. So just a little warning, um, but it's a great product. I've definitely used this a lot. Um, I had this for, for a while, just an FYI. And I'm gonna blend this on with a BK Beauty 106 brush. I'm gonna dip into that product first, get a good amount going. I'm gonna push that into the top of my hand just to get off the excess and also just to kind of pre-blend it into my brush before it hits my skin. So now I'm going to tap it onto the highest point of my cheek. And then we're gonna get the forehead. I always kind of like to start in like the top, top corner of the forehead, if that makes sense. I like to start here and then just kind of work my way down, but really I'm just kind of blending the edges. Now I'm gonna switch my brush to a Angie Hot and Flashy A501 brush, dip back into that cream bronzer and just start to work this along the side of my nose. And just a disclaimer, this is gonna be more of a full coverage foundation routine that I'm gonna be doing. And the reason for that is because I, well, Huda Beauty does not have 
they have glowish, like the glowy tinted moisturizer product. I can't remember what it's called exactly. Um, I wasn't a huge fan of it, so I didn't pull that out for this tutorial. Instead, I want to work with something that I don't work with that often, and that's gonna be a cream foundation stick. So not something that you see on my channel that often. You know me, like I like my glowy, you know, luminous silk, like all my glowy foundations I'm a huge fan of. So let's do something different, switch it up. I'm gonna dab off my lip balm, take the same brush, and just work this underneath my bottom lip. Get that little pre-lip line, lip enhancing action going. Again, trust the process. Really get that in there and let's, you know, let's bring out that, that little in between. Let's pull like a whole Scott Barnes type, type uh, under painting action. And then with whatever's left over, I'm just gonna bring it down the side of my jaw. Just so there's no weird gaps between this area of my face where my jaw is. And I'm just gonna connect it, sweeping it down towards my chin. Getting whatever's left over on my hand. I'm gonna try to get all that product so I don't waste it. I'm gonna pull my ear back gently. I'm just gonna bring this straight down. You never want to forget about this area of your face, right? So this is like, especially if you're gonna wear your hair back and you're you're rocking a makeup look that has like, that's like a full coverage and you're doing underpainting or just cream bronzer in general. Don't forget about this area of your face. This is an area of our face that I think we all tend to neglect because we don't really see it that much, right? But you know who sees it? Everyone else. <laughs> Everyone else but you sees this area of your face. Like if there's an area of my face that's unblended, this is the area that it's, that's gonna be it. Like, just if I'm in a hurry, this is where my husband will see like, hey, he'll call me out. Like, this is probably the only spot in my face that he'll call me out on. And it's only like when I'm haphazardly putting my makeup on, I'm in a hurry, it's my day off, I don't care, <laughs> you know? <laughs> or I'm like testing makeup, which is usually the case on my day off. I'm like testing a bunch of makeup and, you know, just trying a whole bunch of things. Um, but that's like the area that he'll notice right away that doesn't look blended. So don't ignore that area of your face. But now that we got our pre-sculpt, pre-contour going on, we're gonna go into concealer. I'm gonna do probably two layers of a concealer. This is gonna be my first layer of this Huda Beauty Faux Filter Concealer in Vanilla Swirl. I'm gonna do this first layer right here under my eyes where I have all that darkness going on. All that lack of sleep and probably Lack of hydration. I'm gonna do a little bit right here to bring out this area of my face. I'm gonna get this nasty pimple on my chin. I'm going to just basically do the same thing, you know? I'm just gonna underpaint a little bit with our concealer as well. Then I'm gonna to switch to a 201 brush from BK Beauty, a nice clean one. I'm just going to tap this into this area and then blend it out. Tap, 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 because I want to keep that coverage right there. And then blend it out. Same thing, I'm gonna tap it where I want that coverage to remain. I'm gonna lightly blend it out towards my temple, just to give my eyes a little further lift up. So following the angle of my eye there, going straight out with that. It's just gonna enhance that shape, bring it out even more. So same thing over here. I'm going to line that concealer up right along the side of my nose. It's going to blend into my contour and it's also going to enhance that contour. And then blend it out. Same angle as that liner. Give my eyes a nice sculpt up, making them look a little less tired. And I'll same thing, tap, tap, tap. And then I'm going to blend out the edges. I'm going to work it about halfway into my forehead. Cover up that pimple. All right, now we're, this is the part where it's gonna get fun. So like I mentioned, I don't have a Huda Beauty setting spray. Um, I wish I could have gone out and grabbed one. I kind of just forgot to be totally honest, but this is gonna do in the meantime. I just want to wet my skin and just get it nice and damp so I can really go on with the next product that I'm gonna use and I can easily manipulate it and blend it into my skin so it doesn't look dry or doesn't feel dry. So the product that I'm talking about is the cream foundation from Huda Beauty. This has been out for a couple of years. I have the shade Latte. It's a, probably the, one of the closest matches to me. I'm gonna make it work. It's gonna be a little bit darker going onto my skin, but before I put this on, I'm going to wet my skin all over again. So shaking this up, I'm just going to use the Caudalie Beauty Elixir. This is great for just getting your skin nice and hydrated and just ready for some 
cream products to go blend on top. So try not to hit my eyes too much. I'm going to take that product, twist it up a little bit. And I'm gonna grab a Real Techniques. This is a 402 setting brush. I'm not gonna swipe this onto my skin. I'm not a fan of doing that kind of stuff. Um, it's not my way of applying makeup. So instead I'm gonna dip my brush into it. I'm just gonna start to layer this in the areas that I want a little more coverage. So I'm not gonna apply this like crazy all over. Instead, I'm just gonna kind of fill in the gaps where I want more coverage. So a little bit around my cheek. Nice little circular motions just to really blend that product into the rest of my my other products that were on my skin. So we're kind of layering on top of that contour. We're not totally covering it up, but we are layering on top just lightly. Now, normally with underpainting, I've talked about this before, like briefly on, I think my Instagram or maybe it was on my YouTube, but normally underpainting is much easier to achieve and to do with um, more of a sheer and like glowy foundation when you put a glowy foundation on top because if you're working with underpainting and you're doing that first layer of contour or bronzer underneath and you're doing your concealer underneath, whatever your order is, if you go and put a full coverage foundation on top of it, well, you're not gonna really see the results of that product that's underneath because you're basically just covering all up with that full coverage foundation. So this is a full coverage stick foundation, like very, very full coverage, which is why I'm working in just small sections and just kind of blending it into the rest of the areas that I underpainted. So it doesn't completely diminish it and cover it up and waste all that work that we spent time doing. So this is like a way to get a full coverage while underpainting. It's not as easy, I will say, but it's definitely doable. I'm gonna blend that contour on my nose and just kind of soften it so it's just melted together. I'm gonna blend under my eye. I'm gonna go back to my concealer. I'm gonna do a touch more because I like a lot of concealer under my eyes. It's just me. And I'm gonna dot here. I'm gonna do a little bit down the bridge of my nose. And now I want to do with that Real Techniques brush, I'm just going to run that up. I was just going to softly chisel my cheeks even more. This is not something I always do. Just trying to show you guys some different techniques on my channel in case you get tired of the old ones that you see a lot. By highlighting underneath that contour that we placed much earlier, it just subtly brings it out. You might not be able to tell as much on camera, but in person it's gonna look really, really pretty, but really natural at the same time. So blend it out that concealer one more time, and I'm gonna to switch to that dampened Huda Beauty sponge and just work in the excess of that product and really push it under my eyes, getting it nice and flawless. I'm gonna go over my lip, just a touch, back to my cream contour. One last little baby layer. Very, very small baby layer. Now we can move on to cream blush. I I haven't used these in a, a while, but I think I'm gonna go with this more neutral one. This is the shade Perky Peach BK Beauty 109 brush. This has like a flat, but very fluffy angle to it. This is really, really ideal for applying a cream blush or even like a cream highlighter, cream contour, any cream products that go onto your cheek. It makes it really easy. So what I'm gonna do is just get some into my brush, get a lot into my brush, tap in the excess, and then work in tapping motions to apply this onto my cheek. But you can see like the angle of it, that flat angle is pretty genius because it makes it so easy to do this. Let's go for a rounded cheek. Let's switch it up. Let's go a little more on the apples. Let's go for like that, like plump, youthful cheek look. Just, just tapping it. And a little bit, whatever's left over, just right here. Just to kind of tie my nose into my cheek. So now that all my cream products are done, I'm actually not gonna use these big powder puffs. I'm gonna save them for another time. They're a little too big. Instead, I'm gonna use this perfect sized little pink heart. This is the cutest thing I've ever seen in my life. Like I really have a heart. I'm struggling using this right now because I don't wanna, I don't wanna wreck it. I don't wanna get it dirty. I just wanna look at it because it's so cute. But before, before I set my under eyes, I'm gonna go back one more time 
with that concealer brush and just blend out any creases because I've been talking. Now I'm going to dip into that Easy Bake powder and cupcake that I dumped into my tissue much earlier. I'm going to get a whole bunch on my powder puff. I'm going to look up. Press this into my under eyes and along the side of my nose. This powder is really amazing for skin texture. It's incredible for oil control. Like really, really incredible for oil control. So if you have oilier skin and you want to have a very beautiful finish that's that's matte but not in a like a heavy chalky way definitely try this powder this will give you a mattified look but it'll also still keep maintain like a luminous finish to your skin so it doesn't make your skin flat i guess is the better way to describe it so repeating the steps on this side if you look up a little bit it allows you to get really into that inner part of your eye and then you can lift back up Again, just baking the side of my nose because I like to do that. It just brings out that contour. Taking a little bit more, I'm gonna press it under my eyes. This works for me. If you have dry under eyes, you can absolutely skip putting this much powder under your eyes. Now I'm gonna push this into the center of my forehead between my brows. And then right here, I don't like to have any oil or shine in this area of my face. So I'm gonna really press this powder into that area right here. And then what I like to do just so I have really longevity with my lip liners and my lip products, I love to just graze over my lips. You know, this is a personal preference, so if it doesn't work for you, and you don't like that feeling, totally skip it. And then press it under my contour, taking a little bit more. We're gonna just very, very lightly do like a little, little hint of baking right here. Time to bust out some highlighter. So I'm gonna switch to a very old Morphe brush. This is a Y14 brush. Sorry if you can't find this brush anymore. I, I'll try to find a replacement to use instead. And I'm going to dip into a little bit of this guy and this one. But this is, I don't think I even mentioned this. This is a Medium Glow Obsessions palette. Tap off the excess. really pretty. I think when I first ever swatched these, I thought they were kind of chalky. They kind of are, but it still goes on really pretty. It's definitely not like the most like fine milled highlighter on the market. I don't even know if these are on the market anymore, to be quite honest. I have, of course, leak everything that I possibly can in the description box. So if you see it linked down there, it's definitely still available. Now I'm gonna switch to a different brush again. This is the 207 from BK Beauty. I'm gonna dip into this guy right here and I'm gonna highlight the tip of my nose, push it in with my fingertip, just kind of melt it in. And then the very top of the bridge of my nose. These are my two most favorite places to highlight on, especially like my client's face, like all my client's faces. This is my spot, like I love love highlighting these two areas. I leave this center bare so it's not too much of like a like disco ball landing strip down your nose. It just gives you more balance. And I'm gonna take a little bit just to pop in my tear duct. But really I'm gonna bring it in like the side of my tear duct, not really properly on it, just to kind of widen my eyes even more. So right, right in this little nook. So when the light catches you, so pretty. And then let's do a little, I don't normally like that look on myself, but on my clients, I think it's really pretty. Now I want to just top my blush with something else. I'm going to use the glowish sassy saffron cheeky vegan blush powder, powder blush. This is a really, really light blush. I've only like swatched this a couple of times. It's like, it's not the most impactful blush, but I just kind of want to layer it on top of this one just to lock it in. So I'll be using a Morphe Ariel brush. Any small round powder brush will do. Tap off the excess. Yeah, this is pretty, okay. It gives off some color. It's not as light as I thought. And then whatever's left over, I'm gonna sweep across my forehead just lightly. And now to the last powder product we're gonna use, I'm gonna go back to one of my favorites. I use this product 
all the time throughout the week. It's just one of my go-tos that I just will grab off my collection and just take with me on the go just to do my makeup. It just, it doesn't fail me, basically. It does not fail me. It's the Glowish by Huda Beauty O2 Medium Soft Radiant Bronzer. It's a bronzing powder. This just goes on really natural. I recommend this a lot to people. Like if you're looking for a bronzer that just is more foolproof and just really easy to work with because you can kind of build up the intensity. Like it's not as like, like I kind of have to really work to be honest to get a lot of color payoff with this bronzer, but that's actually why I like it because I don't have to, I don't have to like really fuss with it. I can just buff it on. I don't have to worry about it going on too intensely. So, you know, let's say that I'm just, <laughs> I'm just tired and I don't want to really focus on what I'm doing with my makeup. I know that sounds bad, but if I just want to like kind of slap on an easy bronzer that it's not going to be too intense, this is my go-to. I'm going to bring this down the side of my cheek, down my jaw, all the areas that we contoured earlier. I'm just going to lightly set it with this powder. And now, just when you thought we were done, we're gonna go back to that Empowered palette and we're going to finish this bottom lash line. So it wouldn't be a makeup tutorial of mine if I didn't do something in my bottom lash line. It's my jam. So I'm gonna go back to all those colors that we used earlier. I'm gonna go first in with Keep Going and with a 209 brush from BK Beauty. I'm gonna to start to just shade on my bottom lash line. I'm only gonna go, so I'm gonna go across my bottom lash line. Now once that is on, I'm gonna switch to an Angie Han Flashy. This is a really small blending brush. I love this brush. It's an A504 brush. Now I'm gonna dip into a little bit of power and just buff this into like further out on my bottom lash line. This is a really pretty color to use on the bottom lash line because it's really soft and like peachy. Blend that on top. And then like I said, just a little bit further down from that first shadow. Going back to that 209 brush. I'm gonna dip into a little bit of Rebel, just a little bit, and just keep that on the outer outer end of my bottom lash line. It's time to dust off the baking powder. Okay, we're almost to the finish line. One more coat of mascara. I'm gonna use the volume side this time, and I'm gonna do the top and the bottom lashes. Just gonna scoop this into the root of my top lashes to blend mine into those falsies. Okay, we're officially on to lips. I'm gonna use one of my favorite lip liners from Huda Beauty. I have this in my makeup kit and then the brand had sent me like another one not too long ago, which I was really excited about because now I get to keep one for myself. It's the Lip Contour 2.0 in the shade Pinky Brown. Pinky Brown is just a really, really pretty pinky brown, like it's a, a solid color. So if you like tones like this, if you're like a neutral, like everyday, like natural pink lip wearer, this is a must have lip liner. This is a twist up, so I'm just gonna twist that up a little bit more and start to line my lips. I'm gonna blend out the edge of my finger, go straight across my cupid's bow, cause I like to soften those. I was torn when I was deciding like what kind of look I want to do, but since I ended up doing like more of a dramatic wing and more of like an eye focused look, as you can clearly see, out of all my liquid lipsticks from Huda Beauty, the one that's going to go the best with this look just to balance out like the more dramatic eye makeup look is going to be the shade Wifey. Wifey is one of my favorite nude, slightly more on the pink side lipsticks. And this is a liquid lipstick. So if you don't like that feeling, you could always top it with a little bit of gloss. I probably am going to top it with a teeny bit of gloss, but We'll see where the wind takes us. So this is mine. I'm gonna directly apply this to my lip. I just love this color. Now I'm gonna take a little brush. The rest with the brush because I want a little more control. To finish this look off, my lips are feeling a little dry right now. So I'm gonna add a little teeny bit of the Icy Lip Balm from Huda Beauty. And that completes this full face using only Huda Beauty. Perfect.
liked this video, I have plenty more where this came from. You can check out the next one right here. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss my future content and say hi to me on my next live on a Sunday and I'll see you all soon. Bye.